Okay, we've uh, gone through races four through eight for Saturday. So we have all of the early races that are gonna be part of the early pick five. We've done the horse by horse previews. We've given you our selections for all of them. Now, before we move into the late part of the card, let's put together a pick five. So this is like our five team parlay that we have, or a five prop parlay. We have to have the winner of each of these races. Alexa and Roberto put together a pick five for the early races. So Alexa, talk us through this ticket. Absolutely. So like Tina said, we've already talked about each of these. We did them out of order at first, but now back in order, starting with race four, the first Breeders' Cup race on Saturday, which is the Breeders' Cup Philly and Maris France, the one we just talked about. And Roberto and I decided to use four horses in here, including the number four, Vava from Cherie DeVoe, who's this very fast, consistent horse. Um, run this distance eight times and won five of them. And then Society, who personally I think can likely wire the field um, and just go to the lead. And if we see her best, I think it will top everything in here. Roberto, tell us about the other two. Yeah, one magic feeling, number two, she has won three, three in a row. The last one was without Lasix, which is very important. It's yep. just not, you know, it's not gonna be able to, you know, to use the Lasix for this weekend. And obviously the number nine. I mean, I think she's, she's the feeling to be ways and means. Um, they all sigh, Chap Brown, Flavian Pratt. I think it's, she's gonna be tough. Absolutely, so four horses in that first leg. The next leg, we were slightly more conservative with just three horses. It's That's the turf sprint, right? Race five, Perfect. the turf sprint. Yep, and we're using the two, six, and the nine. So the two is Notorious from Phil D'Amato's barn. He was the favorite in last year's edition of this race and disappointed with a fifth place effort, but only one and a half lengths off of the winner, no balls. He got caught in traffic and got boxed in. Can you say that on TV? <laughs> oh, that's I the name of the horse. That. That's the name of the horse. Okay, yeah, that was good. Okay. <laughs> yes, he did just close to no balls, but... Um, that's the breaks, you know, when you're a closer type, especially in these short races, you're likely going to have to deal with traffic. Um, he did win the Green Flash Handicap both this year and last year at Del Mar right here. Um, and he just slays these sprints at Del Mar and uh, looks to be in really good form. So we'll use him. We'll also use the number six, Star of Mystery from Charles Appleby's Barn. Uh, this is a filly against the boys, another one who comes from off the pace. The most impressive race to date was this July when she the grade three quick call at Saratoga with 107 there. and if she can repeat that effort I think will be very dangerous. I think after what I saw in Kentucky Downs regarding Coburn, he's gonna be really tough yeah. in this race. He averaged 109 Bayer speed figure in the last three races and he's one of the top three horses based on the last win in North America with the highest Bayer. What's so. been so impressive to me about him, too, is not only is he so fast, but he doesn't need the lead. He yeah. can sit off. Yeah. And, but this year, he just doesn't even mess around. He's like, I'm just going to go out, run you off your feet, and then finish. The yeah. last the last time at Kentucky Downs, track, the track was favoring the closer. So, yeah. it's still one, you know, but by doesn't, four. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. All right, so we're at three horses in that one, two, six, nine. The third leg of the pick five is the race six Breeders' Cup distaff. And... We're uh, going skinny in here with just two horses. We're using the number two, Torpedo Anna. I said before on this broadcast that she's my girl. I love her. She's the favorite, four to five. The horse to beat, you know, her Travis performance against the boys was just a devastating loss. So close by a head um, to one of the best horses in the country. She's tactical. She can be on the lead. Um, she can sit off. I think the strategy here, because there's not a whole lot of pace in here, I think will be to try to get her out early. Well... We need a b bigger budget for the next time. So, because my top pick is not the top two, but to please the ladies, all right, I have to include Torpedo Anna, and I'm gonna put Raging C on that one. Because, you know, it's, like I say, that staff from Chef Brown is scaring me. Four years in a row with 20 different feelings, winning at least one stake race. Now, she, I think she's gonna be ready to roll. When we talk about the ambiance of the Breeders' Cup, is it not what we're dealing with right now? Exactly. The music going. They turn it up on cue for you. Yeah. I was gonna, it's like they're listening to me. They're producing this show right now as we go. Uh, keep talking us through the pick five ticket here. All right. So the next one is race seven, the Breeders' Cup turf. And we're using three horses in here. Um, the three, six, and the 11. Roberto, tell us about the three. Oh, uh, I told already, you know, this is one of the horses that look fantastic in, in the mornings here at Del Mar, Shariah, you know, Japanese horse, you know, I think he's going to be 
a big big player in this in this race. Obviously, Farbridge, you know, I think like I said, Probably the he, best of the U.S. Yeah, he, horses, right? he he found that module, you know, winning, mm -hmm. you know, races. It doesn't matter what kind of pace he's gonna get, and also we have to. I say six. It's 11, right? And the 11. And 11. Number 11, uh, Trevor Romans, Rebel you know, Global Trotter. Yep. I mean, Charlie Appleby, William Buick. It, uh, actually, William Buick was here this morning, you know, working Charlie Appleby horses. So that is very important. You too. travel together with that horse. You guys get frequent flyer miles <laughs> yeah, all over yeah. the place, yeah, I think. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so three, six, eleven, and then in the last leg of it, it is um, Breeders' Cup Classics. Yep. Of course, the big one. It's where this one ends, and the late big five starts. And we're using three horses in this one, the three, nine, and 14. Roberto, tell us about the first two. City of Troy, I have been waiting for this moment, like the sun says, you know, all my life. This horse, I think, is... It's gonna no. It's not gonna have any problems. You know, running on dirt. City of Troy. I mean, to me, is gonna win the Breeders' Scott Classic. I have to respect Fairness. Like I say, three years old, like Sierra Leone. And, but Fairness is had the best scenario of the race. Don't don't get me wrong. The best post position in the track. How is gonna play that race? The number nine is the one who I think the mic's okay. They're asking if they get a sound over here. I, I think we can hear them. Sound check is good. And okay. Our next horse, next and last horse in this pick ticket is next to the number 14. Um, I added this one in here. I really like the horse. I actually bet this horse on the undercard of the Breeders' Cup two years ago in the BCBC, that big betting championship that I uh, uh, mentioned earlier in the broadcast. And he was five to one. And um, he was my best bet of the weekend that weekend, that day. And we've never gotten odds like that on him again. He's been the favorite every time, I think. And today we're getting those longer odds. So if you look at the margins um, that he's beaten other horses by every time, it's been 10 lengths, 22 lengths, 9 yeah. lengths, 11 yeah. lengths, 25 lengths. I mean, this horse is a rocket. When he goes, he goes. So that is our um, pick five ticket. I believe it costs $108. Now remember, we got to hit each of these races all the way through. Uh, you have to have the winner of race four to move on to race five to move on to race six. And as you can see with the ticket they put together, the, the amount of horses you use in every race, that will make the cost of your ticket a little bit more. If you use one horse all the way down, it would cost you a dollar. Or if it was 50 cents, yeah. just the Why 50 not? cents. But every time you add horses, you end up multiplying them mm -hmm. all the way through. So and we, we mentioned like the pick fives are five winners in a row. But if you're, you know. Pick three? What about pick three? Yeah. Three horses. I was just going to say. So, yep. um, actually, 20 bucks. That's it. Yep. There's subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, DRF Online. I put up two pick threes today, one for Friday and Saturday. And those are cheaper tickets, $9 and $24 for those pick threes. Um, still similar races. But, um, you know, they don't have as much of a potential for the giant crazy payouts that you have with these big parlay pick tickets. Um, but they're still a great way to make some money um, on the championships. The 21st night of September is playing right now. I believe we're in October 30th, though, so we're a little bit off right here. But you can see Birdo uh, jamming to some earth, wind, and fire over there. So um, we're done with the early part of the Saturday Breeders' Cup races. We got the early pick five for Saturday in the books. Now we'll move on to the last four Breeders' Cup races for, for, uh, for Saturday. We'll talk about races 9, 10, 11, and 12, and then we'll get into the late pick five, how we're going to put that together from races 8 through 12. So we appreciate you hanging with us as we've had some some fun. That's what happens when you're doing a live broadcast, right? You never know what's going to go on in the background. We have everybody here with their sound checks. Everybody's getting in because there's live racing on Thursday at Del Mar, and the Breeders' Cup races are on Friday and Saturday. One more time before we go to this commercial break, shop.drf.com. Everything you need there for your Breeders' Cup packages, PPs for Friday and Saturday. Clocker reports for Friday and Saturday. There's also the YouTube Clocker Report video that you could check out on our YouTube channel. And then betting strategies for Friday and for Saturday. Everything you need for both days. Quick break. When we return, we'll head into the back part of Breeders' Cup Saturday.
has fixed that hitch. He now shoots it at the top of his, uh, his, his jump, his release. It's really pure. And right now, he's shooting it at 49% from three. Now, I'm not telling you to shoot at 49% from three for the season. But if he's at 42, 43%, Lord have mercy, look out below. Jason Tatum, right now, my number six player in the NBA. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Time to get into race number nine on the Saturday Breeders' Cup card. This one is the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. So these are for the Phillies and Mares going a mile and three eighths on the turf course. Warlike Goddess probably going to end up favored in here. A horse who's actually been in the Breeders' Cup, different Breeders' Cup races before, was third in the this race back in 2021, was seventh and then third when in the Breeders' Cup turf. Difference is, this race is a little shorter. So sometimes if they want to get a little more distance, they can go face the boys in the Breeders' Cup turf or the Phillies and Mares come in here for a mile and three-eighths. So let's get started with this one. Alexa, you're going to take the inside horses, right? I am indeed. The number one beautiful love is the first horse in this race. Uh, 20 to 1 morning line, long shot, constantly improving figures every single race, um, you know, from abroad to here in the U.S. in August, but, you know, small incremental improvements, so I don't see her making, like, a 15-point improvement, which is what would need to happen, I think, to be competitive in here. The number two, full count Felicia, 12 to 1 morning line odds. I really like this horse, actually. She could be sneaky on the front end, right? I think so. She's definitely a contender after winning the E.P. Taylor at Woodbine and beating Moira. I was there that day, and she was really just in command of that race. She'll definitely be the pace setter in here and a race that doesn't have a lot of pace. I so agree. I was there, too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, we were both yeah. there. We were both there. Everywhere. I need, to, I need to hang out with these guys. I was going to say, I'm up. I'm at my house in Long Beach just like doing that. that. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I mean, when you're the pace setter in a race with not a lot of pace, you have a, you have an advantage. Um, the three is Cinderella's Dream, four to one odds from Charles Appleby's Barn. Uh, ran in a grade two and grade one since coming to the U.S. and one. Both of them comes from off the pace as a closer. I don't think we've seen her ceiling yet, and I could definitely see her being a factor here late in the game. And finally, number four, Warlike Goddess that uh, Gino has already mentioned, five to two morning line favorite. Strongest closer in the field, likely the one to beat a seven-year-old mare who got third in this race last um, at Del Mar in 2021 by half a length. Third again in 2022 at Keeneland, seventh in 2023 at Santa Anita. So very familiar with this race. Bill Mott has it really worked out so that her form uh, cycle peaks every year at this race. Um, so... I think she's live. Berto, you're going to go five through eight, right? And I think one of the horses in there was scratched. We saw yeah. that Lang Lang, the number yeah. six, is going to be out. So yeah. you can don't, talk five, seven, and eight. Th don't you think it's a kind of low, the morning line on Warlike Goddess? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree. Kinda, she's no. a great mare. But I agree. I, I think it's, I Especially think it's with the way low. the race shapes up, too. Yeah. You know? I, I, I would stay with um, Didia. I mean, she, she has won 11 races. And I remember having a conversation with Nacho Correa's. Her, you know, her trainer in Killen, when he told me that he's, he's trying to send her as soon as possible. She want her to acclimatate to Del Mar, you know, to relax here. And I think she's going to be a really, really Because well, there's not much speed, exactly. like we're saying. So if full count, if she Felicia goes, she could maybe sit or second she, or just gonna be right be there. She's going to be close to the base. And, and she can she may take the lead, yeah. you know, by the stretch. It's a short stretch yep. also. So she, she has pretty good chances. Content, I mean, it's not the 2024 that we're expecting. 
Yep. But at the same time, at the same time, you have to respect Frankie the Tory and Aiden O'Brien. And number eight, it hand moon is the opposite, you know, to to Canton. She has a great Sharp. 2024 solid. 2024, three wins, four stars, and she's um, she uh, she's the uh, trainer by the field that matter. Proven you know, at Del Mar who, too. Who proves to be now the king of turf, at least in the West Coast. It's Chad so, Brown on the East Side, right? And then we got Demato out here on the West Side. Exactly. So we'll see what happens. Yep. Yeah. So Anna Set is a multiple Grade One winner. Who's a local horse, a Southern California horse. She was a little disappointing in the John C. Maybe last time out because that was a race where it looked like. Anna Set and Didia were the top two, and both of them were a bit disappointing in that race. But the positive is you'll get a better price if you like either one of them in this spot because they weren't as impressive in their most recent race. Moira, who we were talking about, she is a really, really solid mare now. She's five. She actually was third in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf last year, and I think she's a really just a good fit in this race. I would love to throw her in, pick fours, pick fives, and multi-race exotics like that. Beach Bomb, South African runner, Group 1 winner in South Africa. Now will be making the third start in the U.S., but just going to have to improve because she was behind Hang the Moon, and Hang the Moon isn't even probably her biggest worry in this yeah. race. She's going to have to face much classier runners. Soprano, ah, 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 ah. oh, no, I'm more of a, what, like a baritone, or what do we, what do we say? Alta. Alta? Alta? Yeah. Either way, I, I'm classically trained, a Broadway trained, musicals up and down. Soprano, though, as a Group 3 winner, was facing three-year-old fillies last time? Yeah, I was going to say. Did yeah, I know that? Did I know you've done musicals? I, I got a lot of right, secrets. We're need to see, see that. Got a surprise, you see? Got a lot of secrets here, but she's a three-year-old. She's going to be facing tougher, yes. older, yeah. and she's going to have to deal with going farther. So there's a lot for her to have to overcome. Sunset Glory is kind of a, a, like a softer horse who's been running against lesser company, was a stakes winner, but she was actually overmatched in the grade two Rodeo Drive, well behind Hang the Moon last time out. So a big field lining up for the Philly and Mare Turf. It's going to go as race number nine on Saturday. Let's get over to you, Berto. Talk to us about your selections for this one. And this one, the, the Philly and Mare Turf. Philly and Mare Turf, race number nine. Philly and Mare Turf. I will, I will stay with Didia. I like Didia. I think she's, you know, she's, she's going to run big in this race. I think she's, I'm trying to look for a price on this race with them. How about you, Alexa? I like Warlike like Goddess on top, and then Full Count Felicia, Moira, and Didia underneath. So I think this could be a really good race uh, for some nice paying exactas and trifectas, which is those first two and first three in order in here. I think we could get some really decent payouts. Yeah, so I'll put Full Count Felicia on top, because when you look at the Timeform US pace projector, when you look at the way the race shapes up, I think both the two, Full Count Felicia and Didia, the five, are horses you want to use in multi-race exotics because they could get the trip in here. They may not be the classiest or the best of some of these European horses, but they could get the trip in this race on Saturday. The seven, uh, I would use content underneath in some spots because another one of these horses who has big races to go back to, but as you were pointing out, Berto, not in the best of form right now. Maybe some excuses what, what for that What about Cinderella Stream? Right? The, what do we do I mean, with her? I, I think we have to put it in there. Because she's so lightly raced, as you were pointing out. She continues to ascend for Appleby and for Buick. She's a horse who may be able to sit a little bit closer in here, too, because she's coming out of those mile and three sixteenth races instead of the mile and three eighth race. So she may her, be able to just be a little more forward. Her race are made, and William Buick lost, lost the iron and still won for five lengths, by five lengths. She's, and then she's two for two here. So I think she have, we have to include it. Some questions for Cinderella's dream as she steps up, faces older, goes a little bit longer here. Race nine on Saturday is the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. YouTube. I want to mention YouTube because we have Dan Illman on our YouTube channel who does a fantastic job previewing all of the races. They recap races from last month leading you into the Breeders' Cup. So if you need any help with extra information at all, make sure to head to the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, you'll see faces like this sometimes because we do preview videos uh, quite often. So we see DRF and Espanol and Roberto pop up there. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us. We still have, I think, three more Breeders' Cup races to discuss and then a pick five. Don't go anywhere. He will be two and seven against top five opponents in his six full seasons 
with the Buckeyes. Now you're going to take on, on the road, one of the best rush defenses in the country in Penn State. You're already having trouble rushing the ball. So what does that mean, Ben? That means Ohio State is going to have to rely on Will Howard to throw the ball on the road. The early line, only on SportsGrid. Tatum has fixed that hitch. He now shoots it at the top of his, uh, his, his jump, his release. It's really pure. And right now he's shooting it at 49% from three. Now, I'm not saying he's going to shoot a 49% from, from three for the season. But if he's at 42.3%, Lord have mercy, look out below. Jason Tatum, right now, my number six player in the NBA. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I tend to do this a lot, by the way. I do it more in baseball, but at the anytime home run where I may play four players at home. I'm car- I call it covering the board. You know, if I take four players, but the same amount on each, I only hit me to hit two of them and I win money. He's already got, you know, 438 rushing yards on the season. He's looking like the old LT days where the Chargers were able to have that strong, dominant running back. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Are you okay with him moving to the head of the class at a Heisman with those two games? Because he wasn't even in the discussion before those two games. This is a big opportunity for Dylan if he wants to make his, continue to make his case for the Heisman Trophy. And I think he's shown that, you know, I mean, what is he, a six-year player? He's going to probably end up setting most of the passing marks because he's been around for so long. So why not also throw a Heisman, a Heisman Trophy in the mix? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. We are back, and we're going to move to race number 12. We got the bleeper ready for this one. This is the Big Ass Fans Dirt Mile, the Big Ass Fans Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. It's cool when you can say things like that on places when you're not really supposed to say things like that. I can at least repeat it if it's a sponsor name, you know? So we're going to go horse by horse for the final Breeders' Cup race on Saturday. It's going to go as race number 12. It's the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile and uh, in this one, Alexa, you're going to start us off with Saudi Crown, a horse who was in the Breeders' Cup Classic last year. He actually missed a little time before this race, but he still comes in as a major player. Yeah, he does. You know, he's coming in from Brad Cox Barn, who's winning at 27% right now. Always a strong trainer. 5-1 to one odds. It's pretty decent. Has the inside post and strong speed figures that are, you know, trending upwards. So he gets a perfect trip from the rail i think he's live the number two to saint dennis is a horse um, from japan at 30 to 1 odds long shot who will also want a piece of the early pace ran um going a mile and 16th at churchill on i believe derby day and almost the wire field he was freaky field. good that he day yeah good he almost wired but yeah. that caught at the end so Maybe this little cut back in distance um, can help him out. He has only won two out of 24 races, so, you know, not super fantastic there. But number three, Full Serrano is actually a horse my friend owns, so I'm going to cheer for him. 15 to 1 odds. Made two starts at Del Mar since coming to the U.S. from Argentina. Also going to want to be a part of the early pace as well, I think. Um, has two fast horses to the inside. Sadler, um, trainer in Hronis Racing, the owner, have won the Breeders' Cup Classic two times with Accelerate and Flightline. So they are powerful connections who know what it takes to win on a day like this. Well, uh, let's get on over to, or do you have one more to talk oh, about, right? Katona. I can't Katona. forget Katona. Yeah. Although, honestly, I can't even forget Katona because I just think this figures are too light to be competitive here. This is a big step up. Over to you, Berto. Three Technique is a horse that's been, you know, working very early in the morning. You know, he, he, he won act, act the last time out. I think it's a little bit of a step up in this race. We'll see, you know, how it goes with this one. Since the gray, this horse is tough. I mean, he, he is a fighter. He he won the Prickness yep. in the last race, the, the way that he won the PA Derby. He seems loved. Do you, you think know? the Do you think the rain and the Prickness really made a difference? This is by Arrogate. Arrogate is one of the sire with the highest percentage on wet dirt. Yeah. So that may help. We'll see. Tumba Roomba. 
This word, I will use Spanish word, guapo, that you can apply to two different meanings. Guapo means could be like handsome, like you, rich, like you. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Oh, guapo could be mean, mean like Goxie. Tough. You know? He's a fighter. And, and Which is life. also like me. Yeah, I'm also tough. All right, tumba, tumba rumba. With Luis Ives, who is, you know, one of the writers, I, he doesn't get tired at all. This horse, 30 to 1, I think it, that morning line is way too high on this on this horse. And post time, you know, Ros, uh, Ros, uh, Brittany Russell, you know, Sheldon Russell. It, this horse, I think it's a good horse. You know, he, uh, he went to the Whitney and then came back to the mile. They're, I don't know if they're trying to figure out if this is the distance. Oh, they taking a they taking a shot. Then I think you you know why could not? Get a, you could get a really nice setup in here. The eight post time, yeah. the nine domestic product will be one of the pr horses to beat in here. Grade one winner, multiple graded stakes winner, but he will step up and have to face older company. He was a horse who had a really high like reputation. He was a good morning horse, good in the workouts, and then he finally put it all together with a couple of big races. Muth was the Arkansas Derby winner earlier in the year. He would have been favored in the Preakness, but he didn't run there. And he had plans to run a few different times, but he had uh, his plans continue to get kind of backed up. And so I'm a little concerned. I don't, he confuses me a little bit. I'm not really sure what to Favorite do with him. pretty much every single race that he ran. Yeah, yeah. I know. So it's all yours. <laughs> yeah, we move to uh, Cagliostro, who is another one, kind of like Tomba who fights, who yeah. shows up but just hasn't been competing with this level of class. So this is a big step up. I got to give a shout out to my son, Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. He <laughs> loves the Lion King. And he says, Daddy, can you show me the Mufasa race again? Because when Jason Beam called Mufasa winning at Colonial, he said at the end, Mufasa, 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 just like they do in the Lion King. This is a, a kind of fun wild card to use, at least in some underneath spots. Pipeline feels like a big long shot in here. And then Skippy Longstocking, he's such a cool fighter. And Alexa, I think you like him a little bit in this spot, right? He's my top selection in here, absolutely. I so like him on top. go selections for us right now. Skippy Longstocking over post time, over Saudi crown, over domestic product for me. And then how about for you, Roberto? Domestic product, my top pick of Friday and Saturday and breeder scout number nine. I would include the number six, Cesar the Gray, obviously, and the number 10, Muth, you know, for, you know, trifectas or superfectas, and the number 11, Cagliostro, trying I to get it some. Now shoots it at the top of his, uh, his, his jump, his release. It's really pure. And right now he's shooting it at 49% from three. Now I'm not telling you he's going to shoot at 49% from, from three for the season. But if he's at 42.3%, Lord have mercy, look out below. Jason Tatum, right now my number six player in the NBA. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can. As possible to lock in their cards, we are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage.
I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. We are ready to rock and roll for the Breeders' Cup Mile. And Breeders' Cup Mile is going to go as race number 11. So we have the dirt mile that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. That was race number 12. The mile on the turf yeah. is going to go as race number 11. And I think Berto, uh, Berto's going to talk about the runners 5 through 8. You're going to finish up with 9 through 12. I'll start us out with the horse that I actually like quite a bit in here, Ramatuel. This is a horse who was racing against Porta Fortuna but she doesn't have as much early speed as Porta Fortuna does. And so in those races, she actually doesn't really have the type of advantage. I think there could be a good amount of speed to set it up for a horse off the pace a little bit, like this one, who was a group one winner last time out, beating Ken Ross over at Longchamp. And that was the first start since, uh, from, since June. So now second start back, saving ground inside, could get a really nice trip. Chili Flag, ton of respect for this horse, who's had a very good year always comes running kind of like a Rodney Dangerfield horse because gets to no respect. This horse doesn't ever get any respect, never gets bet at the windows, but always shows up, always uh, gives a really good account of herself. Uh, Geoglyph, oh, for the last 12, the Japanese runner, but the grade one Japanese uh, 2000 Guineas winner from earlier on in the career. So we know they can jump up with a big effort. Diego Velasquez is in really nice form for those top-notch connections. This is another one for Aiden O'Brien, for Ryan Moore, and Diego Velasquez has won back-to-back -back group stakes there. So there's the first four in here. Um, and we'll go over to Roberto. Goliath. Yeah. Goliath, who won a uh, Kentucky Downs and Mint Million uh, wire to wire with one-on-one -on -one Bayer Speed Fever. So fast. I don't know if he's gonna be that fast this time, or he needs to go faster. And that may too play. much. It may yeah, have to yeah, do too he, much. He's gonna play against it. So we'll see. Notable speech. Um, I was talking to you know about William Buick and Charlie Appleby. William Buick was working this this horse this morning, um, here at Del Mar. So this is a really neat horse. One of five, seven, seven time out. I think it's it's gonna be good. And Porta Fortuna, I've been following this filly for a very so long nice. time. I remember that she lost last year uh Santa Anita yep. after the three win three great group one winners. Remember in Europe is group one, you know, winners in a in a row. And I think it's she's gonna be one of the favorites. She's four to one, she probably and three to one. Yep. Well I, I love her on this race, the the this number seven. And then more than look, I really don't understand. The 20 to 1. No way. Line. More like 12, right? This there is a horse who feels like that no kind of a race. no way. This horse has to be 20 to 1. Yeah. This horse was flying twice mm -hmm. against everything behind Carl Spockler, and now he comes to the third race of the cycle, which is one of my favorite angles. I think he's going to be in the mix, too, in this number 8. It's more than looks, who, yeah, we, we all agree, is a little too high up on the, uh, on the board. Alexa, finish us up. Talk about runners 9 through 11 in here. Yep, absolutely. So nine is Johannes um, with Umberto Rospoli aboard, four and a half to one, or plus 450 odds for our sports bettors out there. Has four straight wins and has won seven out of eight most recent races. He's a Del Mar specialist who's in peak form, so definitely could be dangerous in here. The 10 win for the money for our Mark Cassie's barn, 30 to one morning line odds. Coming off a win in the grade um, one Woodbine Mile, his speed figures are definitely at the peak, um, but he hasn't ever faced this level of competition, yeah. and I do think this class jump will pose some serious challenges for him. The 11, 10, Happy Rose is a Japanese mm -hmm. horse, 30 to 1, morning line odds. So when he won the, Vic or when she won the Victoria Mile, Roberto told me he bet her that day at 207 to 1. <laughs> No, no. I was Two, like, Geez. 207 to 1. That's I want to tell you. I want to yeah, tell you. That's one of the bigger prices you're going to see on a winner. Well, I don't know if we're going to see it again next no. time, though. I don't yeah. think it's going to measure up to this level. But the field does round out with the number 12, Carl. 
Spackler from Chad Brown's Barn. Six to one morning line odds. I like this horse quite a bit. Has won seven out of ten lifetime starts. Um, four out of his last five. Has a rising form. You know, Ch Chad is just a powerhouse trainer for sure. I think this horse in here is the best combination of both form and connections in the yep. race. And he has gotten so, so good. I'm just a little worried about the post, right? And remember, E5 throat bread. They have now three for three in Breeders' Cup. The odds they of that run three times and they won all of them. The odds of that are unbelievable. I don't worry about the post as much on those longer races. And he's got that doesn't bother me. Though. He's got the tactical speed from the outside. To, he's a little I'm versatile. I'm afraid that, that maybe Tyler is going to have to use it a little bit. A little bit too much from out there. But I mean, that's my baby right there. So uh, <laughs> let's get to selections for this race. Well, let's. You know, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I has to pick uh, Fort, Fort, Fort Fortuna. Fortuna. I'm going to pick Porter Fortuna, Carl Spockler. Obviously, you have to respect, you know, the number six. I think it's a horse that you have to include it. Notable speech. I don't know if it's a typo, but I like more than look better than Johannes. Consider Johannes, Johannes is a really good horse, but I prefer to go with more than looks. Well, my top pick is Porter Fortuna. More than looks, the late running closer who's going to come uh, at the back of the pack. You've got Johannes, who's really, really sharp. Alexa, talk to us about who you have in this race. Yeah, I've got the seven on top, Portofina, uh, followed by Carl Spackler, Johannes, and Diego Velasquez. So I mentioned the one, uh, Romatuel, who I think should be able to get a little it's bit so, better. So of a trip. Race. This, that's why this race is so tough. This is such a classy individual because she's sort of forgotten about yeah. because she's not as highly regarded, right, as Porta Fortuna. Or maybe as notable speech. But, 100% the money. But she's, nice time, time start. She, it may for she her have been money. just more of a running style thing, right? She just may have not gotten the trip and the setups in some of those races. And I wouldn't be shocked if she actually floated up a little bit. And you got Diego Velasquez, Aero O'Brien, and Ryan Moore. I mean, you start, <laughs> you go through this Breeders' Cup mile field. It is so, so good. Keep uh, it all bottom, please. That's it. <laughs> you want to make sure that you have a lot of coverage in this race when you're playing the uh, multi-race exotics here. Um, so this will be race 11 of 12 races. When we return from our break in, uh, in just a minute, we have one more race to discuss. We're going to get into the Breeders' Cup Sprint, uh, which is the, the dirt sprint. So we haven't, we haven't gotten to the sprint yet. And um, we actually... We'll be able to get a pick five together from the late races yeah. for both of you guys as well. So Absolutely. we got the early pick five from Saturday. We'll have a late pick five from Saturday. It's just the three of us as they play. Yeah. Just the two of us right behind <laughs> us right now. So um, Raw Matuel, one, eight, nine, six for me. Wanted to ask you guys a couple questions about a few horses that we only briefly touched on. So Johannes. This is a horse who is one of those horses who has such a high ceiling. Normally, I always think that in grass distance races, the Europeans are usually the best. But a horse like Johannes, I, he actually could be as good he, as some of these European runners. His current form, I think, is even the same or even better, I will say, than European. And, and also, if you want a picture or a horse, this is a perfect example. He's beautiful. Johannes. I mean, his confirmation is simply, simply perfect. And shout out to uh, Lucia. We got to give Lucia some love. She does so much work behind the scenes. She's been out here getting video of horses in the morning, and she got some video of Johannes. And we'll be posting those to the DRF social media accounts, and we'll also be posting them to the YouTube channel as well. Um, so, of the Europeans, you went through your selections. Like, which of them? Do you prefer, or or how are you going to play them on a ticket? Like, are you, are you only going to use some of the horses that you mentioned, or are there others in here that you like that you might be including? You ask me these Por notable I'm speech, Port to Porta Fortuna. Porta Fortuna, I mean, is my top pick. So, I mean, that's well, that's a given. And what kind of trip are you hoping for with her? You want her to be kind of close, but not necessarily close, all close, the way. Close, well, not as the last year. She was, I think, she was like a kind of close to the rail. I prefer now her to be in the middle to the outside. She was only about two yeah. lengths out of it. So there is a Breeders' Cup mile. When we return, Breeders' Cup sprint. We'll finish it up. It's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. 
good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was so Lincoln! But he had that he program was going there. Only on Sports Grid. Did they talk about the play they ran at the end of the game where it was the worst player we've ever seen in the history of basketball? No. So here's what you got to do, Sherwood. I respect you. You're fantastic. But damn it, don't blame the officials. When you have a game like this that close, there's about a hundred or a thousand different things you could have done differently that could have won you the game. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Right here with you on Pro Football Today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion, trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I am uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long. People. What? in the world is going on in Miami, Doc. It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot take, hot take. I think this line is asking you once again to take New Orleans. Pro Football Today, only on Sports Grid. They lost in Neyland to Tennessee, 24-17. to Again, and look, that puts Alabama in a very tough spot. I was looking at the SEC standings just before. They've got two losses now uh, in conference because they lost that Vandy game. They're still uh, one of the top-ranked teams in the country when they lose. Everyone else drops like a brick when they lose, except for Alabama. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Thank you so much for hanging out with us here, folks. Uh, our three-hour journey, our marathon, is coming close to an end. We have one more race to preview, and then we'll put the finishing touches on it with the pick five. So we are going to be seeing some really fast horses right here. Yep. This is the Breeders' Cup Sprint, which is going to go as race number 10. And as expected, Roberto, in a race like this, there's a lot of speed. There's a lot of fast horses. And we, start with, and we start with speed. One of them, right? Number one, Ray Turin. This horse is I won three in a row with higher uh, Bayer speed figure, 104 twice. You know, speed from the rail. Yep. That's it. Yep. Number two, Don Pilot. This one has good lay speed. And as, the only thing is, as, as Steven Asmussen combined with Christian Torres in the last three months, they got five percent. They have won three, three, four, forty, something like that. It, I mean, he has been terrible. <laughs> it is time for you know to step up and try to do something. Federal judge, judge, I love this horse number two, number three. It's not because Aaron Judge. It's because it's Federal Judge. It's because it's Ira Ortiz Jr. Brad Cox. And it seems interesting to me that this horse was trained by Rodolfo Brissett, who have also had Mulican for the same owners. Windstar Farm, Sienna Farm. We'll see. We'll see what something is going to happen with these two horses. It, it, it's going to be interesting. Nakatomi number four ran fantastic last time at Keeneland, considering no no horse was closing that weekend, and he was able to close behind Federal Judge, but against pretty much everything. Now he's going to get the pace. He's going to be closer, and I think he's, he's a horse that you have to you know look out for. Him. I think you have, uh, are, are you the next? Or I'm going five through eight, right? I go five. I'm distracted because I'm singing like in the loving you whether, whether times are good or bad or happy or sad. Let's get into the number five in here. So Don Frankie is one of. Did you hear that? He just said the body weight of Don Frankie is 1,500 pounds. Yes. Wow. He's a monster. And he's a monster horse. I think. Horse. All of the Japanese runners in here are pretty live because they may get the trip. Like horses like Don Frankie could be sitting, and we've seen this horse on the dirt against top level company. This horse was second in the Golden Shaheen a little earlier on this year. Ben Tornado, who I respect quite a bit, is a grade two winner, but this is way tougher than what he's been facing. And he has to face older and a lot of other early speed in here. So that concerns me a bit. Meta Max is another one that could get a nice setup from off the pace. I'm looking for some of those off the pace horses because of the presence of horses like Straight No Chaser, the eight who can flat fly. 
We know that the one raging torrent is fast. We know that federal judge is fast. We know that Ben Tornado is fast. You put all those horses together, they are going to be moving. And we didn't even mention two of the horses that you're going to mention towards the outside who are really fast. Everybody's fast. fast. Everybody's fast in here. But the number nine remake is another Japanese horse. Um, beat Skelly three back, but lost to Don Frankie and Nakatomi two back in the Golden Shaheen. You know, he's a superstar in Japan. But, you know, whenever he's stepped up to face Group 1 company, he can't quite pull it off. Um, and has just recently lost to stronger players in here. So um, not going to be on any of my tickets. But the number 10 is a different story. Mulliken, um, seven to two odds Flavian Pratt will be aboard um, like most in here will, who will want the lead but also has proven to be able to handle rating in the past so I think likely he can sit off of Skelly and Straight No Tracer um, and try to pass them in the later stages. He's been doing that lately, going seven furlongs. So I like his odds of He'll not fit, conceding and tiring fitting. here in this. Fit yeah. on the cutback, right? Yeah, exactly. Do you think he's going to be able to take the lead on that post? No, I think sit. he can write a little bit because I think he's rated before and can handle it. But, um, you know, he's had those four straight wins, including the grade one forego. And I just think he seems... Ta more tactical than the others, a lot of the other speedsters in here. And They're that, kind of one-dimensional. Yeah, and in a race like this where there's so much pace, being a tactical horse is going to mean a lot. And then finally, the far outside, number 11, Skelly for Steven Asmussen. 8-1 to one morning line odds. I like this one quite a bit as well. Um, I think either he or the number 8 straight no chaser will grab the lead. I like him on the outside um, considering how much time they do have before the turn to get in that um, leading position. He'll have a lot of his pace to the inside, um, which is better than having it to your outside in a race like this. And out of everybody in here, I do think he has the best chance to wire the field. I would expect him to be in the top three, even if he were to get caught at the end. I'd still expect him to hit the board. So we went through each horse in the Breeders' Cup sprint. Let's get to selections for race number 10. We'll start with you, Roberto. Who do you have on top here? Looking for a very long shot here. Ben Tornado. Nice. Okay. They're I, to one. I saw that on the pick ticket. Love it. Like, what? Yeah. Big, I, big I, prices. I, yeah. Got I, think, I don't think he's going to be on the league. You want him to sit. And he, he has shown he I can sit a little bit. I don't yeah. think he's going to be on the league. I think he's going to be sending four, fifth, and probably try to take the lead with the turn for home. These are the kinds of conversations that everybody has, too, when you're sitting around with your friends, talking a little trash about what's a horse going to do, right? I've got this well, one. No, you're going to be wrong. And what's great in racing uh, and in, in I sports, it, I think it's, it, we, we always will find out, right? Yeah, we'll find out. His connection, we're looking for a really good post position, and I think they get it. So that now continues. Gives them some started. options. Exactly. They have some options there. Let's I have to include Nakatomi. I, I think it is for this is the one that... He's probably going to end as a favorite. Get a great trip. Should yeah. come closing in here. There's a lot of speed to run at. Let's yeah. hand it over to you, Alexa. Yeah, I have Mulligan on top. I just really think with the tactical speed that he has and the ability to sit off a little bit will be really valuable in here. And then um, Skelly after that. I love the 8-1 to one odds on Skelly and then Nakatomi as well and Federal Judge. Yeah. So I'm going to put the 9 remake on top. And we keep talking about the Japanese horses, how they've come over with so many live horses. And yep. to me, it's horses like this that makes sense because Remake has faced top company on the dirt. He's a legitimate dirt sprinter. He was in the Riyadh dirt sprint, finishing behind Elite Power and Gunite last year when he was third. Then he won the Korea sprint. He was in the Golden Shaheen at May Dawn and was only beaten a length that day. And then he came back this year and was in the Korea sprint. He won recently after a little bit of a disappointing performance in the Golden Shaheen, but he had time off and he came off the bench and got that prep race out of the way. So I think he was able to shake off any rust there. People's favor. Look at his odds in yeah. the last five races. He's just been <laughs> freaky, freaky good. And he beat a horse named Anarchist, who's actually a U.S.-based sprinter yep. that is a graded stakes horse that would have been a long shot in here, but is actually a really nice horse. So I put the nine on top of the ten. Mulliken, the three federal judge, who's really, really fast. And then uh, Don Frankie's another fun horse from Japan that could get a really nice trip. So we got you finished. With each of our race previews, all 14 of them. 14. But we're not done yet. We're going to put a big bow on everything in our final segment. We're going to go through the late pick five sequence for Saturday. Roberto and Alexa have put together a pick five ticket that's going to start with the Breeders' Cup Classic race number eight. And it'll go races eight through 12. So when we return from this quick break, we'll get you all set up. We'll say goodbye. We'll remind you where you can get all of the DRF Breeders' Cup information, but don't go anywhere. The important final segment coming up next. We'll talk pick five in just a moment.
when you talk about how these series came to a head and what has been happening in this postseason for the Yanks, offensively, it hasn't been Aaron Judge. Baseball is such a big win here. All you ask for, East Coast Monster City, West Coast Monster City, the biggest of biggest Titan superstars on both sides here, two mammoth fan bases. The entire country can buy into this one. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. Did they talk about the play they ran at the end of the game where it was the worst players we have ever seen in the history of basketball? No. So here's what you got to do, Sherwood. I respect you. You're fantastic. But damn it, don't blame the officials. When you have a game like that that close, there's about a hundred or a thousand different things you could have done differently that could have won you the game. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I tend to do this a lot, by the way. I do it more in baseball, but at the anytime home run where I may play four players at home, I'm co- I call it covering the board. You know, if I take four players, but the same amount on each, I only hit, need to hit two of them and I win money. He's already got, you know, 438 rushing yards on the season. He's looking like the old LT days where the Chargers were able to have that strong, dominant running back. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. They lost in Neyland to Tennessee, 24 to 17. Again, and look, that puts Alabama in a very tough spot. I was looking at the SEC standings just before. They've got two losses now uh, in conference because they lost that Vandy game. They're still uh, one of the top ranked teams in the country when they lose. Everyone else drops like a brick when they lose, except for Alabama. Pharrell coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. So this is the late pick five. That will start with the Breeders' Cup Classic. That's going to start in race number eight on Saturday. It will end with the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile race 12. So races eight through 12. Mm -hmm. Alexa and Roberto put the tickets together. And you see what I did? I make them put the tickets together. That way, if they don't hit, nobody blames me. It's just all them. But you know what? When they win, they they get all the credit. So I will say, it goes both ways. And you know what? I want to give you guys both a lot of credit because you've done a fantastic job over these last few hours. So uh, go ahead, Alexa. Set us all up. All right. Well, it starts again, like we said, with the Breeders' Cup Classic. And we've gone over this race twice, so we're not going to deep dive it again. But we have the three City of Troy, the nine Fierceness, and the 14 Next as our picks. And the second leg is race nine the breeders cup philly and mare turf we have three in here we're gonna go with the number two full count felicia um 12 to 1 odds so get a little bit of a price in here contender after winning that ep taylor at woodbine and beating moira like we were both there that day he was wearing that shirt that the same shirt that day (laughs) but you know this is a good setup for her in this race with the being the pace setter in here without a lot of pace and then Warlike goddess as well, strongest closer in the field, um, likely the one to be seven-year-old mare who's run in this race multiple times, I think three years now, um, and Bill Mott just knows how to have her in peak form. Yeah, I think we have the three also in this one. The three as well. All right, Cinderella's dream. You know, beside between her and, and Didia, I decided to put this one because, I, I mean, it's Charlie Appleby. His number is big for himself, and I think she's, I mean, she's going to run great. So. Yeah. The third leg of the pick five is a race 10 Breeders' Cup Sprint. We're using three in here, the 6, 10, and 11. Roberto, tell us about the first two. Six the first and the th- six and the 10. Uh, my long shot. Your long shot. Ben Fernando. I, I looked at when he sent me his picks. I was like, really? We're going to, but you know what? I will never talk someone off a of big a third price, one. right? Never. I remember, I remember when I say the same thing about Carabell. And people react the same way yeah, and look yeah. at what happened with Caraval. So what? maybe this will be my this year Caraval. I'll talk you off a favorite, but never off a horse like that. No, never. Uh, I'll pick no, your, no, I was no. going to say, I'll pick exactly. at you if you're like going to eat the chalk and it's going to be a short price. Exactly. But a big price, you always take that swing, my friend. And, and, I, and I think in Molly King, you have to include it. I yeah. Mean, he's, 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 the, the year the Flavian Pride he's having, I think he can close his Eclipse at work this weekend. He's an up and coming sprinter too and I think as you pointed out of all the speed horses he's the most likely that can sit off the pace because he's drawn to the outside too so that could really help him. Yep. We'll also use number 11 Skelly. um, 8 to 1 odds probably will be the leaders on the outside post with all that pace to the inside not a bad spot to be. As you're talking they're playing Isn't She Lovely? I am lovely. Thank you. That's why they're playing it for you. (laughs) Oh. That's amazing. Yeah, so nice so of you. you. Uh, all right, well, hopefully.
hopefully we're lovely enough to win this pick five. Uh, race 11 is the Breeders' Cup mile. We're using two in here, the seven and the 12. We'll recap the seven for us. Aura Fortuna, three great group one in a row. And I think she's gonna be huge. She's gonna run huge this Saturday. Porta Fortuna, remember, my top pick of this race. His girl, he loves it. And then uh -huh. Carl Spackler, the number 12, is the other one in here from Chad Brown, who's a powerhouse. Um, I said earlier, I think the best combination of both form and connections in this race has won 70% of her lifetime starts um, and has a rising form. And finally, race 12, the last race, wrapping up a Breeders' Cup Saturday is the Dirt Mile. And uh, we're going to use four in here, spread out a little bit. The one, eight, nine, and 14. Roberto, tell us about the one and the nine. Saudi Crown, you know, I think he's, he recovers in, in the last race. He shows that. And, and, I, and I think he said, you know, he deserves the chance. It's for Ranger Rule, it, it is Brad Cox. And the number nine, like I say, th this is the horse that I like the most the whole weekend, domestic brother. The, the way that he looks, how, he's, how he, is, he has been running post position, he has experience in four turns. Remember the mile here at Del Mar. Is, they, have, they need uh, two turns, you know? So I, I think it's, it's everything fit for him. Yep, and the last two on the ticket are the number eight post-time trainer, Brittany Russell. Her husband, Sheldon Russell, will be riding, so it's a family affair, a versatile horse, nine for 13 in his life, a value play with some proven consistency, and then number 14, Skippy Longstocking, four to one odds, um, seven wins at graded stakes level with tactical speed and an improving pattern. So that is the latest pick five on Breeders Cup. And that is going to do it for us here. We really appreciate all of you hanging out with us and we hope we led you in the right direction a few times throughout Friday and Saturday. A couple thank yous to give out first. Our producers, Mike and Rich, they were doing an Crush incredible it. job over here with a lot of different variables happening. We're live. We're on track. Awesome job from them. Audrey, the PA, helping us out. Thank you so much. Uh, Tyler and Will, who jumped on earlier with us, and Roberto and Alexa. Appreciate all the hard work yeah. that you you, Gina, for leading the, leading the way here. Thank you. Remember, <laughs> folks, shop.drf.com. That's the place to go. You can get those Breeders' Cup packages, and we also have the free Timeform U.S. cards for all those sports grid viewers out there. Use that promo code SGTF24. Good luck in the Breeders' Cup.